nervous already. So much has happened. So I don't have a whole lot more to say. Oh, that was encouraging. I'm so happy you were disappointed. Like, oh, man. Uh, what incredible service. Uh, you know, just starting off with an incredible welcome by Marvell and Alexis. And, um, man, uh, I, I love Marvell's song. You know, uh, we, we didn't say a whole lot about it, but that was powerful. If you have a mother, then you better love her. Because you will never, ever get another. That was awesome. I like that. That was great. And, uh, of course, the uh, communion. Can't, can't say anything bad about the communion. I mean, that was my mom right there. That was, that was awesome. Um, and then, of course, that uh, GNN video, so powerful, so encouraging. I hope you see the profit of your investment into the kingdom right there. God is working all over the world. And, uh, and then, of course, Anna's contribution. I mean, what can you say about that? I mean, that, that, that is the fruit of our sacrifice right there. So very encouraging service so far. Uh, we've, we've got a message this morning, and the title is, the greatest investment. You know, I think that uh, a mom would see her children as a great investment. And so today we're going to be talking a little bit about money, though. I mean, we don't talk, we don't talk about money a whole lot in our church. Um, I, haven't, I don't do a sermon a whole lot uh, very often about money, but today we're going to talk about money. Amen? Amen. Uh, you know, it, next week is our special missions contribution. Come on. Uh, and just to continue to inspire you, if you haven't yet, take a moment to go to the back. We've, we've got a little missions table. You see Keenan eating that... Uh, is that a donut, bro? <laughs> he's, he's eating his lunch right there. Um, but we've got a nice little table set up there for missions, and I guess for Keenan as well. Uh, but you can go take a look at that. Uh, thank you, Alexis and the Campus Sisters, for making that special, uh, just to see what God's doing. You know, special missions contribution truly is the greatest financial investment a disciple can make. A few synonyms for invest, buy into, take a stake in, get a piece of. You know, as disciples, this is what we want. We want to buy into, take a stake in, and get a piece of God's kingdom all over the world. You know, I was going to actually share a little bit about that house that my mom was talking about because we were talking the other day about it. It was so funny, they, they bought it. Back in the early 90s for $82,000. Wow. Um, it was a fairly big house with a big backyard. And um, back then you could get a house for $80,000. The mortgage, I asked her, how much was your mortgage? She said, only $800 a month. Wow. <laughs> Must be nice, right? And uh, yet it was a great investment. It sold on a hot market a few years later for about $125,000. And uh, that was a hot market back then, you know. That was, a, that was a great investment. Uh, but then there are times you look back and you go, that was a great investment, but maybe there are some other things that weren't such a great investment. And uh, my first thought was back to a couple years ago, we moved into our new home and uh, we needed a couch. And so Courtney found this couch that was on sale and it was a, a down couch. Yeah. So it was very comfortable to sit on initially because it was filled with feathers. Yeah. And we sold it a couple months ago because, well, we sold it for much less than we got it for because I'm surprised anyone wanted this yeah. couch. Because you sit on it and you sink into it and it's kind of comfortable in the moment, but when you stand up, you're covered in feathers. Yes. And our whole house was just covered in feathers. We, we went through several vacuums because the feathers would just jam it and break the motors. I mean, it, it, was, a, it was not a very good investment. Um, and yet, special missions will never let you down. Yeah. I've never heard a story where somebody gave special missions and then asked for it back. <laughs> or gave special missions and then regretted it later. Yeah. Kind of like what was shared earlier. You don't know God's will until you see it in the rearview mirror. Wow. And oftentimes with special missions, you, you make this financial investment uh, to see what God's going to do. But then you've got to wait to see what God's going to do. Yeah. And so oftentimes when you hear about investment, you also hear words like interest 
and profit. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. If you would, turn your Bible to Philippians chapter 2. Our first point is pay special interest. Don't you just love paying interest? Some of you spoke too soon. No, you don't. No one likes paying interest, man. Pay special interest. In Philippians chapter 2 and verse 1, it says, If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from His love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. You know, typically, you pay interest on investments, and yet Paul here is using this term in a little bit of a different way, and he says, you need to pay special interest to one another. In verse 4, he says, each of you should look not only to your own interest. Now, Nobody's saying right here. He's not saying ignore yourself, neglect yourself, pretend like you don't have any needs. He's saying, no, you can pay attention to yourself and you can pay interest to yourself, but also make sure that you're paying interest to those around you. Wow. You know, I saw an incredible example of this on Friday Come on. because we were out to dinner for somebody's birthday and the party was planned by someone not in the family. And I thought, that's incredible. Wow. Courtney and I left the party and we just thought, that's so amazing. I've never seen somebody plan somebody else's child's birthday party. Yeah. Wow. One incredible heart to take an interest in somebody else. We need to be grateful for discipleship because we are called to take interest yes. in on. each other. Yeah. You know, in the world, you, you didn't get a lot of people paying interest in you. Right. <laughs> You did it. I remember me. I tried so hard to get a girlfriend when I was in the world. I tried so hard. No one, no girls were interested in me. And I'm, I'm not trying to have a pity party here. I'm telling you, no one liked me. It was hard. I had lots of interests. You got nothing reciprocated. I'm not bitter or anything. I'm just sharing with you the facts. You know, and, and then uh, I, I met this beautiful woman in 2010 that took special interest in me. And, you know, it was, it was, it was kind of interesting. We were set up on this blind date at a GLC. You never know who you're going to meet at the GLC. You know, she knew some people. I knew some people. They knew each other, and they kind of took us on a blind date. We went to none other than Starbucks. And we gazed into each other's eyes and talked about a whole bunch of nothing for about an hour. And at the end of it, I realized there's no interest here. She had no interest, I had no interest. But over time, we started working on that friendship and we fell in love and Courtney became my wife. You know, it's interesting. We'll pay interest to other people when it benefits us. But that's not the stipulation here. He says, because of your relationship with God, pay special interest to one another. Amen. You know, and then he sums it all up here in verse 5. He says, your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. The same, not similar, not close. Don't try. He says, it needs to be the same. Paul doesn't lower the standard. He doesn't lower the standard for anybody. And so everybody in the church, front row to the back row, yeah. we're called to the same level of expectation, which is to carry the attitude of Jesus wow. in our hearts. Wow. He continues in verse 6. Who being very nature God did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Wow. In a world where men try to be gods, God became a man. Wow. We need to humble ourselves as Jesus humbled himself. Verse 9. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that's above every name. 
that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Wow. You know, right here he illustrates for us exactly what it looked like that God became a man. Yes. Talk about humility. Yes. You know, giving special missions contribution is not necessarily just about your salvation, right. though it is an important piece to your salvation, but it's about the salvation of others. Yeah. And I want to talk about this for a moment because there is a command from Jesus in Matthew chapter 28. The Bible says all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to Jesus. Therefore, he tells us, go and make disciples of all nations, yes. baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I'll be with you always to the very end of the age. Yeah. Yeah. I think I quoted that right. Yeah. 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 Come on. In other words, you are individually commanded by God to have a global evangelistic impact. Yeah. Come on. You. I mean, these, these, these disciples yeah, are standing there. They feel like Jesus wants them to go and evangelize the entire world. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Now, if Jesus walked in the room right now and said, Jane, I need a sandwich. She doesn't go to Jesus and say, all right, come back next week. I'll figure it out. Right. No, you, you, you figure it out. You scramble. You go and you make Jesus a sandwich. Yes. Yeah. If Jesus says, go and make disciples of all nations, he's not delegating this to you to delegate to somebody else. He's saying you have a responsibility. Wow. If you're going to follow me and be my disciple, you need to be a part of world evangelism. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't really have a life situation that enables me to just get up and go and evangelize the world by myself. Ooh. And so as disciples, we need to be a part of a global movement of disciples that as a whole, we are the body of Christ and we can go out and evangelize the world. Right. You evangelize locally. You go, you go out, you evangelize as much as you can. But to the places in the far stretch cities that you won't ever get to, we need to give support to our family, the body of Christ, as they go and they evangelize. Then you can claim Matthew 28 as your own conviction. You with me here? If somebody does not give special missions, it is a direct disobedient act to Matthew 28. It's a command of Jesus and an expectation that we work together and we take care of each other as we strive to evangelize the world. You know, I'm so inspired by the GNN to see that we have now reached 10,000 disciples. And as awesome as that seems, you need to know something. We're still at the very beginning stages of what God's going to do. It's begun to multiply. It's begun to multiply. It's not going to be long before you see 15,000 for the Lord, 30,000 for the Lord, 50,000 for the Lord. Things are going to grow incrementally. We're going to see exponential growth all yeah. over the oh, world. Oh. You know, the expectation for all of us is not just to take an interest in getting ourselves to heaven, but doing whatever we can to help everybody around us get to heaven. Yeah. If you haven't yet give your special missions contribution, I encourage you to give it today. Yeah. And if you've already given it, I encourage you to do one, or, one of two things. Either give more if you can, or number two, find somebody that hasn't and help them get theirs. Yeah. Because as a church, as of next week, we need to be at 100% of $130,000 for the Lord. And then we can help and support and take into account Matthew 28. We are evangelizing the world. Amen? Amen. You know, I was so inspired by what God's doing all over the church. As a church, as of right now, as of yesterday, <laughs> we're around 65% of our special missions goal. Amen? That's incredible. And I've been very inspired by some of the miracle stories I've heard in the North region and the East region, but I've been especially inspired by the Central region. I mean, why? The Central region is composed, about 95% of the Central region is college students. And so it was, it, it, it's just been incredible. College students are renowned for being broke. They have no money because... Many of them don't have a consistent source of income. And yet, 
They are selling hamsters and cupcakes and figure it out. The central region is cranking the special missions right now. I got a call from Marvell yesterday. He said, bro, did you see that so-and-so just gave $3,200 for missions? And, and it was just last week. He said, bro, did you see that this, this brother gave over $2,000 for missions? I said, bro, he doesn't even have a job. He must, he must have some hamsters. It, where there's a will, there's a way. When you really want to make the investment, you scramble, you figure it out, you work it out, you make it happen. Yeah. And this needs to be the heart and the spirit yes. of a Seattle church over the next couple of weeks. Oh, you know, um, the challenge here is simple. Pay interest to the souls of others just as it was paid, they, mm -hmm. others paid interest to your soul wow. when you became a Christian. Amen? Amen? Point number two, when you make an investment, you want to hear that you turn a profit. Yeah. Turn a profit. You know, typically, you make an investment, you want to make a profit. Amen? Amen. In a financial context, profit is financial gain. And yet in the kingdom, we need to see what profit is all about. Look in chapter three of Philippians in the middle of verse four. If anyone else thinks he has reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Mm -hmm. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law of Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for legalistic righteousness, faultless. Mm -hmm. This guy basically said, I've never disobeyed the Bible. Prove me wrong. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Takes a lot of confidence. Yeah. 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 Verse 7. But whatever was to my profit, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more? I consider everything a loss compared to the surpassing greatness of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ. The righteousness that comes from God and is, my, is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the, fellow, and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Wow. Point number two, turn a prophet. You know, right here, we see Paul's heart to turn a prophet. He desired profit. And profit to him was what? It was spiritual gain. He teaches that I had earthly assets. I had things in my life that were worth bragging about. I had things going on that you would have been envious of. And yet I consider all of it a loss. Rubbish for the sake of gaining Christ. You know, it's pretty incredible, the, the heart of Paul right here, but really the heart of God. Because we know that what's being communicated right here is that all things in this world are rubbish or trash compared to the spiritual blessings that we get from God. Right. You know, so often we, we, we get blinded and, and, and confused and distracted and we start to value things in this world yeah. way too much. Yeah. Way too much. We value things. We value trips. We value dreams. We value our home way too much. Wow. You know, I think that there's a conviction that we really need to have as disciples. Go for it, bro. And it comes from a song. Okay, sing it, bro. I'm going to quote it. This, this world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. You know, right here, guys. It's temporary. Yeah. Yeah. Our true goal is to get somewhere beyond the azure blue. Come on, friend. Come on, friend. It's in the song. <laughs> you know, I've been so inspired by, uh, by many of the disciples in the church and, and all the things that God has been doing here for the special missions. 
Um, we do have some very exciting announcements we're going to be making next week awesome. as we continue to finalize them, just laying out the plan for the Seattle church for yes. the rest of the year and some plans to even send out more missionaries onto the mission field yes. wow. in the next few months. Wow. We've been given the charge. We've been given the charge to evangelize the northwestern part of the United States. Yeah. Lord willing, next year we'll be planting Missoula, Montana out of the Seattle church. But yet this year, we're planting, we're a part in the Pack family of churches. We're planting a church in Iowa City, Iowa, Kansas City, Kansas. But if you really want to live on the other side of the border in Missouri, you can do that as well. <laughs> you know, we're, we're also planting a church in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. And I'll, I'll tell you what, guys. As exciting as it is to know that these things are happening, the truth is we need people to go to these places. And I'll be honest. It's been a while since I've had a volunteer from the congregation come to me and say, hey, I really want to go on a mission field. And, you know, I'm, I'm, in, I'm encouraged to give special missions, but also I'm inspired to know who is going to be out there on the mission field over the next couple of years. We need to have the heart to consider our earthly profits and assets as a loss. To see the salvation of others as the real profit yeah. and the real gain made from our investments. Yes. You know, today is Mother's Day. Come on. And I don't know if there's anybody in the world that embodies the heart of investment like a mother. Yeah. I mean, from the moment that child is born, their life is dedicated to taking care of that child and raising that child. Yeah. And, you know, I remember when Courtney and I had our first child. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was, it was uh, November uh, 2014. Yeah. One of the scariest times of my life. <laughs> and yet, as we came home with our son, we didn't realize that everything was changed forever. <laughs> you know, the things that you once held as so precious, like sleep, <laughs> don't seem to matter anymore. And, you know, Brinson used to cry in the middle of the night, one o'clock, three o'clock. I don't even know what time it is. I'm making that up because I know it happened. <laughs> and, you know, the amazing thing about Courtney is, I just remember many nights where, where he would be crying and she would wake up without opening her eyes and just kind of roll out of bed and miraculously make it into the other room to take care of this little baby. And as time goes on, you, you see that child grow. You see them develop. You see them get taller and fatter and then skinnier again. And then it's really an amazing growing process. What an incredible example for us. What an incredible example for us to know that we are called to take care of the body of Christ. We are called to take care of each other. We are going to see it continue to grow and flourish and develop. And yet, how does that happen? It happens because of our mission's contribution. My challenge is simple. Pay interest. Pay a special interest. To the needs of others. Yes. You will see awesome. your investment turn a profit. So let's get invested. Special missions contribution is the greatest financial investment that we can make. Yeah. Let's continue to invest as we see the salvation of souls all over the world. And to God be all the glory. Amen. Yeah.